Okay, so I have, oh, let's not blow everything around. I have my B page and I haven't fully developed my idea. So my first idea was to open up the page, you know, to have like a flip door so then the B would show up. But I almost feel like the B is my favorite part of this. And I love how she sits on here. So I think I am going to start by, do we want her to be even fancier? Nope, I like the purple and the yellow, which of course go together very beautifully. And kind of the black, and we may be doing some more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue her down. And then, we're going to cut out a door that's going to flap and she's going to be the door, right? Yes. So we're going to start with that. Where's my good glue? There it is. Nouveau glue, best glue. Doesn't get stuck. We're going to stick her down. And I want to get really close to the edge of her because I'm going to be cutting her out more so than I'm usually very careful and especially with her little wing here. And I got her little feely bits. I probably will cut those out as a whole, but I did do some fancy cutting, fussy cutting on the edge. So I want to get her stuck down. looks about even, huh? Where's the edge of this page? Okay, I think this is gonna be okay. We're just gonna put her down, commit. We're going to commit to where she's sitting. Oh, I almost think because this is a disc page. No, I want her to have a hinge. I was thinking because she's a disc page, we could almost come through here and come through wherever this is. So we're just gonna cut into those disc areas and then they'll still work. Cause then I could make her totally open up, but I think I just want her to open up into something behind it on here. Oh, let's take this off because there's a little bit on the edge. That always messes me up. Okay. All right, and I have, hold on. I need something to be the tab to open her up. I almost feel like I want, because this has a titch of blue in it. It might be okay. I may want a yellow one. But in the meantime, we are going to do some fun stuff on this. So first off, I am going to emboss her. And this is going to be a crazy pants one because I need her to be super stiff. So I am going to emboss her with ultra thick embossing powder clear. So this is going to be clear. When we do the clear, we gotta get our tray really cleaned out because any other color will contaminate clear, right? And we are going to use, doo -doo -doo -doo. nope, we're gonna use the embossing dauber for the, oh, you know what we could use? Hold on. I have this WOW Mixed Media Embossing Brush. We're going to use that. Yeah, okay. We're going to go for it. I was thinking I might want to do it with Mod Podge first, but that would make her super wrinkly. So we're just going to take lots of this off. Because this can tend to be super thick. But since I need to go over such a big area, this would be a nightmare to try to do with like a pen. 
So let's do this with this brush. I'm gonna get a bunch of this down here. And I got this brush from Seth Apter. He's cool. All right, we're gonna get some embossing powder on there and see how it goes on here before on the flower. So this is extra thick. Clear. All right, let's emboss. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. All right, let's give it a second to dry because it has a fair bit of hot embossing powder on it. But this is gonna help to protect my bee. It's like putting a layer of plastic on it. Okay, I'm thrilled with that. Let's keep going on our flower. And this is kind of like doing your nails. If you've ever painted your nails, this is kind of what you get, kind of what it feels like. And I'm going to do this whole flower in this, and then I'm going to probably do my bee in some translucent glazed um, embossing powder. But I don't need to use the fancy kind for this flower. And I just need to get a little bit of embossing glaze or embossing uh, liquid on here, and it's super sticky, right? That's it's for the embossing powder to stick to. And you can kind of turn it and make sure you're getting to the edges because you'll see it's shiny. And we can be way more careful once we get to our bee. Let's go ahead and pour this on. That is way more delightful than trying to do it any other way. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okie dokie. Now, if you have a magazine image like this that you love, um, it might be worth uh, embossing it just to keep it safe because magazine images are super, super delicate. Like this is a truly delicate piece of paper. It's not made to, to last forever, right? So when you go ahead and emboss something like this, you're gonna get a much, um, like this is a thick coating on it. It's gonna be fine for being in my journal. All right, now we're gonna use, we're gonna switch over to an embossing pen and we're going to, this is a good one. Oops. Let's go ahead and dump out our clear, thick embossing powder. Okay, 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 okay. That's fabulous. I really love that. It gives it a little shine but I'm a shiny kind of gal. I like shine, so if you don't like shine, embossing may not be for you because it gives everything a shine. So we're gonna come in and do her eye, because my bee is a girl. We're gonna do her little leg, and I'm not doing the white parts because it will dull those white parts. So let's do her little leggy sections. And I'm gonna be using a color called Hickory Smoke. Oop, we could do her her kind of shiny stripies over here. There we go. All right, cool. And this is um, embossing glaze, so it's translucent. And it's just gonna highlight those black parts. Okay, now we're gonna do yellow. And this is, I'm gonna have to get some more of this. This is fossilized amber embossing glaze. And I'm gonna use my ratty old pen because I'm gonna do quite a lot of it. So I'm gonna come over here and do her little head. And since this is translucent, if I get a little bit on the black, it won't show up because the yellow is lighter than the black. So it will be fine. This may use up a bunch of my fossilized amber, but that's okay because it's for my very special bee. 
I have been saving this bee for a while. Now I wanna to talk to you guys about saving your images. As I'm saying, I saved this very special bee forever. So I have maybe three or four very special images that I'm saving. And then the rest of them are all kind of, oh, I would really like to use this somewhere. And I wanna show you what happens when you don't put it in a journal, right? The reason you wanna put it in a journal is to keep it safe. So these images I pulled out and they were starting to get ruined, right? Because I didn't put them in a journal. So you want to use your images in magazine clause. You wanna use your images as soon as you uh, can. See, that just adds a little extra pop of color to her bee body. She's so darn pretty. I love her. Okay. And now we're going to go in, and I am going to use my um, pen for this, I think. Let's let this dry dry. Just takes a minute to dry. Yeah. I'm going to go in, and we are going to do that heavy... Uh, extra thick embossing on most of her to keep her safe. So we're gonna take our, you think I, 50% of the time I could get it right. We're gonna take our big old nasty one I cut the end off even, cause it got so gross. And we are gonna color a bunch of this everywhere it didn't get done and even a little in cause it's clear it's fine. Right, we're gonna do over here, we're gonna do her little white eye. And we might even go around this back part where she's gonna be, just put a little light dusting everywhere. Cause I want to protect her. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Boop. It's like sugar. All right, see, I got it on a bunch of the places where I didn't do the other embossing. And since it's clear, it's not gonna matter. So I'm gonna emboss this and then we're gonna cut her out. Okie dokie is a stunner. So I kind of like the little speckles of the, the super thick embossing being around. I'm almost thinking I want, all right, let's think about that. All right, so I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff to this page. First off, I'm gonna grab two kinds of um, Bombay, yellow ochre and golden yellow, because I want this to be a really yellow, yellow page. We're gonna put just a little bit of this up here. Is this the one that's weird? I think this one might be the one that's weird. Yeah, it's kind of thick, but that's okay. We're gonna put it up here and kind of smoosh it around over this rice paper on the edge. We could probably thin it with a little bit of water because you can thin India ink with water, but it still is gonna be um, permanent when it dries, which is nice. With all the layers I do, I feel really uncomfortable if I have weird under layers. Now I probably will do a little bit of the Tim Holtz sparkly spray at the end. Um, Okay, I really like how that looks around the edge. So we're gonna, so nice, we're doing it twice. Okay, I think I need to titch more of this. There we go. We're just gonna go around here. Whew, that's cute. All right, now we're gonna do this color, which is really good, nice and bright. We're gonna come in here and that's soaking into the rice paper, but it won't soak into my bee right this second because she has embossing powder on her. So it gives me a little bit of a 
a window. If I left it on there, she would, it would um, soak into, like dry permanently on her wings. I don't think you'd see it on her body, but on her wings that are white, I wanted to be a little bit more careful than usual. Oh, this looks cute. There we go. So this is almost making it seem like the, um, the yellow from underneath is, is coming through the rice paper. Oh, I'm gonna have to do another squirt. Oh my goodness, this is pretty. And it's so funny, I'm kind of ignoring the fact that uh, there's big splotches of the page that aren't colored, right? But this, but these little areas that aren't colored are what make it um, feel mixed media-y. Do I need any more yellow? I might as well do over here while I get this out. But, the open parts of the page are what make it feel like it's mixed media and not just perfectly painted. Um, so I'm not mad at it having like little areas where it's not all perfectly painted. Long story short. Okay, let's clean that up because I have left indie ink open on my page and been very unhappy. Now I want to, oops, <laughs> just stuck my hand into wet indie ink. Give me a sec, I'm gonna dry that real quick. Okay, I am gonna take a page from this background paper and we are gonna use, I have a stamp set. I just rearranged my office and now I can't find it. Oh, here we go. So I have this stamp set that is just like those circles so we're going to do this circly bits, and then we're going to also do some um, text in this super thick um, embossing powder. Okay, and I'm even, I even got my stamp block out for this, because this is, this is an important page to me. Okay, we're going to do that there. And we're definitely going to come across here. All right. And I don't know. This is good video. Can you see <laughs> clear, clear um, embossing on a clear page? All right, and this one I think I'll do from the bottom. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, that looks cute. Okay, then I want my very special stamp that I use all the time with the funny text. Jink. Ooh, and maybe this I'll do in the yellow. because that'll still be translucent yellow. Okay. So this is gonna be subtle. I'm hardly ever subtle. Cra I don't know what kind of crazy talk this is. Oh my gosh. She's beautiful. Hmm. I almost... I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to make this a flip page. I might make this. You know what we could do? That's what we're going to do. We're going to cut the inside of this page. She's always going to be seen. That's what we'll do. But we're going to leave her just like she is because she's beautiful. Um, I do feel like, though, that since we're um, going to have this go together... 
let's go ahead and um, you want to have your stuff all match, right? So we're gonna, and I only have to do the outside because I'm gonna be cutting the inside of that. When I can't find my pen, it's on the floor. Okay, I put some in there. Put some on the edge. I think I did it in four places I did. Okay, there we go. And that's gonna be very smoochy, but that's okay, because we're gonna cut most of that up. Oh, I think I lied to you. I think that since that is a magazine image. I am going to do all of this in mixed media. Ooh, I have that new. <sighs> okay, I feel like, what did we do with the leftover? We put it in our ephemera box. So we're gonna take this piece of leftover stuff, we're gonna get it on the edge because most of this is gonna get cut off because we kind of did it opposite of what we were doing. Let's find a wee bit more something, something that we can use in here. Okay, boop, boop, boop. No, I want like black and white. Oh, there we go. There's some black. Okay, I like this black. We're gonna take that out for a minute. I love that. I love that very much. Maybe we'll do a little collage thing on the edge. That is Tim Holtz tickets. Oh, you know what I have? I have some of my black numbers that we can do. Maybe those guys, maybe these guys. I think these guys. I gotta get this collage sheet cut out. And I don't need a ton of stuff because the focus is gonna be the B, right? Nobody's really gonna notice my fanciness over here. But I still feel like, okay, we're gonna use also, um, what is in here? <gasps> no? Mm. Ooh, what about some of that? She's got some black stuff in here. We might use some of that, okay. Because I don't think I have any black printed. Oh, maybe I do. I lied to you. Oh, I do have some black. Okay, let's use a piece of this. Because we got the circles underneath, right? Oh, this is kind of fun. All right. We're going to collage this. Oh, you know what? We can collage it, but we also have to, on this um, wax paper, put a little real glue to hold the edges because I have found on almost every page that it has popped up. That's a lot of that's a lot of Mod Podge. That's okay. We're going to come up here. We're going to do this part. Ooh, that's a fun part. I love that. It says New York. All right, we're going to flip this over. I'm going to stick that down. Nice. Okay, all stuck down. Let's do some over here. Okay, choo, choo, choo. And I know you may be thinking, but you just embossed there. Well, you'll be able to see some of that through here. And collage is literally all about layer upon layer upon layer of That's what makes it cool. Okay. 
And then let's do a little piece. I don't like that straight edge. There we go. There we go. Okay. It's a good thing I didn't let you go. I almost let you go and then I would have ignored you and you wouldn't have gotten to see this cool stuff. There we go. Nice. Okay. And now we need to cut this off. You know what else we need to do? Oh, I just stuck my fingers in wet glue. Imagine that. I would say that hardly ever happens, but it happens every day. Okay. So now, is that stuck? So now we have some black and stuff going on. Good job, us. Okay, that's not gonna stay on there anyways. All right, so something we have to do is this page is gonna flip open now, or be a page, yeah. This is gonna be cut out, but we're gonna have, like people are gonna see this. So we can kind of do the edges, but honestly, I have found in my life that just do the whole thing because you might change your mind. And then you don't, oh, spritz our page. And then you don't have the whole thing painted, and the next thing it's a kerfuffle. Do not try to save your art supplies. Use all of the supplies. What are you saving them for? Okay, so this we're gonna set off to dry. This we're gonna do the back of in our same color. So this is the same color story, right? This whole like two page set goes together because it's the same color story. I'm so glad I decided to try not to try to cut up my bee. It could have worked amazing. There's a slight chance that it would have been totally awesome and that I'm making a horrible mistake, but I really love that bee. And the thing is, if I don't cut it up like that and I decide later on I wanna do something different, I can do something different. Okay. All right, so those guys are drying. We'll give them a wee minute. Okay, let's clean this because distress paint, while it's wet, is water soluble. Once it dries, it's not. So some of this will come up and some of it might not that dried from the first round. But the wetty stuff that's going on right now, we can get up. And then we're going to have to get the uh, indie ink back out. Okay, that's all I need this for today, for sure. So let's do something on these. So if we think about it, we're going to have like a little page. I want this to be on the corner. And I want this to be really cool because it's going with my B. And I think I want that on there. I like how this is, so let's, first things first, let's, where did it go? I had it two minutes ago. Oh, there it is. Let's rat some of this edge with a little ratty tool. It just makes it look like it's been, uh, like it's not brand new. Could do it with sandpaper too. I don't do it all over, I just do it here and there. So that's cute. Get that a little grungy. Let's make this bent where it looks like it would bend. Right? Like it was a real ticket. Oh, fun, look, it's on the back too. So when we have it on the back, it's gonna, it'll be fine when we open it up. We'll just make sure the rest of this stuff 
doesn't go on the back. Two-sided. Nice. Okay. Let's get out our let's get out our distress inks. Oh. My tin was beautiful and clean at one point in time. Now it's all grungy. Okay, I think I'm gonna use, do I wanna use a black? Yeah, I wanna use black because we're doing, um, I can use black and yellow. So let's do black and wrap those. All right, so like it got a little bit worse for wear. Some people go around every single piece of ephemera and uh, do that, but I don't do it all the time. All right, so these two look too pretty, right? This I could rat a lot. These two look too pretty, so we're gonna take and put some scratches in them and kind of distress that so it looks a little grunger on the side. Sandpaper's wonderful. Okay, get our ready tool back. Whatever this little gougy thing is, we're gonna make it even worse. Like it got a little beat up. Okay, this one, we have to really do the edges because this is a clean piece of paper. Get a little dark in here. Ooh, I almost don't want it to be as black, so we're gonna use um, hickory smoke, which is kind of a gray. And it will get more into the um, scratches than it'll get to the rest of it. There you go, that just looks a little dirty, nasty, like it got a little We'll beat up. There we go. Ooh, that looks much better. Much worse, much better, right? Okay. I think that's all I want for right now. I'm probably gonna emboss them. Oops. So let's emboss this in hickory smoke, hickory smoke, because I want everything to be shiny. This may be a huge embossing project. Um. Get used to embossing. All right. Hickory smoke. I know I had it out. Uh-oh, we got a lot of yellow in there. Let's get the yellow out. And this will just make it look a little dingy and old. We can even rub it off some places. There we go. This is gonna be a little bit blowy, so let's use our squeezers. All right, yay, that looks great, dingy and old. We'll put that off to the side. Um, this one, this one I almost feel like I want to use, let's use the extra thick with that one. Do we want to use the extra thick with that one or do we want to use, I lied. Let's use vintage photo with this one to get a little brown ratty tint. There we go, vintage photo to this to kind of go with that. So we're gonna, and then Knock a little bit of it off here and there. Maybe a little bit more around there. Okay. There we go. Not quite perfect. 
okay? And a little browner, right? So we got this over here. I do think I wanna blacken it up a little bit. So we're gonna do that with the black. Let's see if there's enough on here. There we go. Just a little bit more. Cool. Love that. All right, now this we're going to do all in the extra thick embossing powder. But I do want to, before I do that, kind of get that line a little bit. I don't want it perfectly. There we go. Okay. A little bit over here. Get that corner. Like the corners got a little dirtier. All right, perfect. Perfectly dirty. Oh, shoot. Let's do the same on the back. I'm not going to emboss the back. But we don't want the back to be brand new ephemera. And the front to look all beat up and disgusting. Right, right. Okay, here we go. Which side is our good side? This is our good side. thick. Okay, and if you're wondering what condemned has to do with my B, you are overthinking this because I um, hmm. I don't quite love what happened to this one. I feel like it got too brown. Hi, honey. So we are going to go over it again with black. And that might make it so that it... Well, let's do parts of it with the black. Let's see if I can make this look like worn vintage. Rather than just brown. Hi, honey. What are you doing? You want to come see mama's? I was going to go make a sandwich. Do you want to have a sandwich? Yeah. You think maybe a sandwich? Okay, I like that 100% more. I don't know if you can tell how that changed that, but it went from being a big brown blob to having some dimension. I might even do a little bit more of that. I'll probably do some more around here too. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna come up in here. We're gonna do a little bit more around here on this edge. Oh, and we're gonna go around here, get some more of this. Just random. Okay. Put these guys in here. Okay, you want to keep working on things until they make you happy, because that now makes me happy. Oh. Yep. That was not what I wanted, and then I kept going, and it got better. 
And worst case scenario, if I really, really, truly hated it, I would just throw it out, right? It's a piece of paper. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, where is that one I was working on? Oh, I found it. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm done with this. I lost the lid to this. There it is. I am loving that. I have a big jar of that. We are going to be using extra thick embossing powder. Okay, and to me, that went from super pretty clean, looked like this a little bit ago, to grungy old enamel, something I would find vintage. So those make me happy. Okay, so now there's our B. She's the bottom. Here's this. We're going to cut this out. Let's get our very special Martha Stewart trimmer. Okay, so we're going to cut. Now, you may be the kind of person that measures. I am not the kind of person that measures. shouldn't make you mad. I know some of you, it makes you mad, but that's okay. This is my project. You can measure your project. Is that going through? I feel like it went through there. I feel like it just dented that one. Hold on. You gotta go back and then you leave me mean comments about how I'm not doing it right. So I feel like, if you feel like I'm not doing it right, oh, there we go. We'll be able to cut it out at least. If you feel like I'm not doing it right, then you can do your art and I will do my art and we'll both enjoy arting. And for any of you who feel sad, I am not sad. Do your art and don't let anybody tell you how to do it. There we go. Okay. So we have a square window. We don't know how big it is. And all I got to do is get one little part of it to be cut through. But it was a lot for Martha to cut through. I think you'll agree. Because then I just take my snips and I snip around. But I have it already uh, started for me. All right, let's, there we go. And I'm just gonna snip around here. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here's a trick I have learned. Once you cut out your page, if you, because this looks like the other part, right? So this won't look weird hanging around on the back of this. If you glue this on the corners, so I need to take off a fair bit and then I can't have it over here. So let's do this. And then let's take off a fair bit. that going to fit? Is there, nope, we're not going to see it. Oh, I bet you we can see it. Hold on. That'd be okay. I'll take a tiny bit more off. I think there's a bulge in the middle. The battle of the bulge. I think we can all sympathize with the bulge in the middle. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this on here, and it's going to help reinforce that flippy page. Because when you cut the middle out of a page, it kind of makes it weaker. And I tend to ask a lot of my pages. So, I just reinforce them in kind of a cannibalistic way with their own insides. Oh, I just creeped myself out. Okay, there we go. That will be good. 
Let's get this one. So we need this to be a lot skinnier. There we go. And this one, yeah, we got to cut off a teeny bit. Not too much. And we're just gonna glue this one on the back. Okay, pretty good. That definitely makes it much more sturdy. And let's just do along here. We're gonna cut this in half. Hi, Paul, what you do, Bubba's? Did you see a squirrel? And for this to be really helpful, it has to cross over this part right? Otherwise it, it just becomes loosey goosey. So we're going to have two braces on the back on the edge. And then this is supported by the, um, the spine of my journal. So it doesn't need as much support as the rest of it. So we're going to do this. Oh, see, no more loosey gooseys. And we're going to do this and then we're going to stick our stuff on and we're going to be done. Well, he's a potato. He just fell down over there. He was going to chase a squirrel, but then he got tired. Okay. This is the top. Uh, oh, I lied. We need to... You're okay, Wall. We need to, while we're here thinking about the colors we used in the B, do this so that we don't forget. Because sometimes in the past, I would... Um, be like, oh, I'll remember that. And then I never remembered it. Ever. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. So, we are going to real quick do our edges like we did on the bee. And this is, I think, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Little ratty edge there. And we're just framing it with the yellow ochre. Which is a weird consistency for my indie ink, but it is a pretty color. And it kind of beads up on the uh, wax paper because the wax paper's resistant. Okay, just put the rest of this somewhere. Here and there, we're not gonna waste. And then let's get out our golden yellow, which is golden, so pretty. We're gonna put that everywhere else. See, the consistency of that one goes on wax paper a lot better. Uh oh, we're gonna need another spritz. Because I don't want that white paper there. And this, we well, might be covering up part of this, but don't ever like go, <laughs> ask me how I know this. Don't ever go, oh, I'm gonna be covering that up, so I'm not gonna do that part, because I guarantee you, you will have to drag all your crap out again. Okay. Oh, which do, Mall? You see something? Okay. So we're gonna put this here. And this here kind of tipped. And then this over here like it's a <laughs> Wally Hush. Like it's a tag. Like a metal enamel thingy mabob. Right? So that's going to go there. Because even though this is super sweet, I am still at heart, a super grungy girl. Even though my, okay, so we have to move this over far enough, right? So that we don't go over our, um, go over our uh, disc bound areas. So we're gonna do that first, make sure that's safe. Then we can come over here. It goes to about there. Glue the snot out of that. And then we're going to put this guy kind of tipped a little bit like that. 
Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a tiny attacher under here to staple this on and keep that nice and stuck there. Okay, so it's about the bottom half of this. Okay, stick that on. Let's put this on here for just one second. Give it a second to dry. Okay, and then let's get our planner, or our planner, our journal. And you put him on here. And usually there's not a top or a bottom to them. Okay, this paper will lie flat again sometime, especially as I get more pages on top of him or I put the cover on top of him, he'll start to lie flat again. And then, hold on. Oops, we gotta cut through here. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. Oh, so glad I did it this way. Then you can always see him. He's under there in all his beauty. Okay, I am thrilled with that. So that is our B page with a flippy uppy. Hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.